Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Prabhjot. Uh, thank you, SAP, for having me today at this uh, virtual summit to share perspectives. All of us would agree that the last few weeks and months have been extraordinary and unprecedented. The disruption caused by the pandemic has been sudden, global in nature, and with severe impact to lives and economies. References are made to the Spanish flu pandemic in the early part of the 20th century or to the upheaval caused by the two great wars. However, none of us are likely to have experienced any of these events firsthand. The global financial crisis of 2008-9 is perhaps the one we can all relate to, which had a global impact, but of a very different flavor and intensity. The current pandemic has forced economies across the world to lock down completely for varying periods of time. Some sectors such as travel, tourism and hospitality have had complete loss of business for some time. Other sectors such as non-essential retail, manufacturing have also been severely impacted. Sectors such as essential retail in some formats, healthcare and pharma, utilities, media and communications, etc. have been operating, but at varying levels of activity. The financial sector, banks, financial, uh, insurance, stock markets and other markets have been operational, but with constraints such as reduced hours of operation, etc. Government activities around the world have carried on with priority given to managing the pandemic. So, what are the key implications from this tremendous disruption? Firstly, businesses have had to immediately manage the here and now. Lockdowns and closure of airports, etc. have been imposed with very little notice in most countries. So, how does as a business cope with the sudden closure of factories, offices and other places of work? How do you manage commitments and expectations from various stakeholders, including your customers, employees, suppliers, lenders, regulators, and community participants? Secondly, as we are witnessing in the last few days, governments are slowly relaxing the lockdown norms and allowing economies to start opening up. This is not going to be like a light bulb being switched on. It will be more like a knob or a dial being slowly and perhaps in fits and starts turn to bring things back to normal. This may take several months. This is the recovery phase. The actions required by businesses during this phase will be quite different from the earlier phase of here and now. And I will talk about that shortly. Thirdly, businesses have to plan for what happens after the recovery. They have to grow and thrive, since that is the primary objective of a commercial enterprise. They can fulfill many of their societal obligations only if they are a functioning and viable entity. This I would call the revival phase. Again, the actions required in this phase would be quite different from the earlier phases. However, the planning has to happen now. One cannot wait for the recovery phase to gain stream and mature. Many decisions, especially on spend management, have to be made now. So let us see what would be the defining characteristics of organizations which would be able to successfully navigate all these phases. We will also see what the enablers are. We'll also see as financial finance professionals and leaders, how does one help influence and manage these changes? First is resilience. The ability of the business to bounce back into shape or recover quickly depicts resilience. It is like elastic, being stretched and returning to its normal size after being let go. The present disruption is and will stretch every organization significantly. How do you get back to normal? First and foremost are your employees. They need to be safe. In the current context, it has meant that employees have to be enabled to work outside the office in many sectors, deliver services to clients, 
both internal and external, without loss of efficiency and any compromise in quality and regulatory standards, and also in a secure manner addressing cyber threats, data privacy breach risks, etc. Second is adaptability. This is the ability to change your strategy, behavior, and actions to suit the new situation. Businesses are not going to be the same. Your customers' business and their customers' businesses are not going to be the same. This will apply whether you are in a B2B scenario or a B2C or a B2B2C framework. The time it takes, the trajectory and velocity of the recovery and revival phase will vary by industry and the companies within them. How do we therefore adopt to the new normal, if you will, and ensure that you will grow and thrive? Business models need to be tweaked, new offerings launched, and or new markets, markets targeted without compromising on superior customer experience. The key is customer centricity to use a cliche. Businesses need to understand what it will take to help the customer, their customer, and their end customers in many cases survive, recover, drive efficiency, and manage costs. And more often than not, how these customers can grow and transform their businesses. In other words, how do you help customers in their resilience and adaptability journeys? Towards this, one needs to understand the key business or economic behaviors that have already been prevalent and has become even more relevant in these times. Number one is mass personalization at scale or catering to the expectation from customer to get tailor-made or customized attention and experience. We have seen several examples in the online store uh, or the gig economy whether it is banks or insurance companies or retailers or airlines, crafting your interaction, offering or experience to the individual customer becomes important amidst competition and is truly creating a segment of one. Number two are the opportunities available from leveraging the capabilities available in an ecosystem. The key is rapidly tapping into the capabilities and resources of partners and competitors to influence their entire value and supply chain and create new experiences, products and services for customers. Number three is the adoption of business models that leverage the value from transactions at multiple levels and expand the addressable market and thereby create exponential value. A good example is when you uh, want to buy something online, depending on your customer preferences or depending on your interaction at that point of time, how choices are made available to you so that it expands into uh, multiple business opportunities for the retailer. Number four is the capability to reduce the time between ideation and execution and time to market by embedding a risk-taking mindset. These four business pillars, mass personalization, the uh, ecosystem leveraging, uh, the uh, creating exponential value, and embracing a risk-taking mindset, cut across businesses and industries, and are intrinsic to what we call in thesis as business 4.0. What helps companies succeed with these business pillars? The answer is not far to seek. Technology is the enabler. There are four digital technology pillars, and each one of them is already making significant difference to businesses worldwide. First is adoption of cloud services at scale. Adopting a holistic approach to managing applications, data on the cloud, provides greater agility and speed to market for new applications, robust business continuity, especially in these times of huge disruption, and more important, reduce IT costs and optimize resource utilization. The second technology pillar is harnessing the power of data and analytical tools 
to get intelligent insight and thereby enable creation of customized solutions. Data analytics and data science offers opportunities across sectors, be it healthcare, communications, transportation, retail, social sectors, and governance. Or as all of us are aware, data-driven decision-making and data validation have inherent advantages and businesses would do well to embed the enabling technologies to be able to do that. The third is automation and use of AI. Technologies that can perform three core tasks, namely self-learning and continuous refinement. Second, recognizing both structured and unstructured data and based on first understanding what such digital data means, derive insights therefrom and act upon it. Internet of Things or IoT with use of often inexpensive sensors placed on machines, equipments, vehicles, etc., enables contactless continuous data collection, which when subjected to analysis, while often on the cloud, brings a whole new set of possibilities to improve efficiency, stakeholder experience, and much more. The fourth is adoption of agile methodologies at scale. Agile is often used in the context of developing technology solutions where continuous iteration of development and testing is enabled. And instead of betting everything on a big bang launch, work is delivered in small but independently useful increments. The same methodology can be adopted across many other facets of problem solving, solutioning and rapid rollout. This is even more important in the current context. I have spoken about the four economic pillars and the enabling technology pillars, which become the cornerstone for ensuring resilience, becoming more flexible and responsive, and thereby adapt to the new circumstances. These will enable businesses across sectors to recover from the disruption and revive in the new circumstances. As towards of finance, charged with the responsibility to navigate through these times and help business leaders, it becomes very important to, for us to understand the power of these business and technology trends and decide on resource allocation. While cost and spend management and cash flow optimization will be very critical in the short and medium term, during this widespread disruption of economic activity, demand contraction, and dislocation of supply chains, businesses need to be able to effectively adapt to the business rebound, capture the demand, and be successful. Trust, empathy, and transparency would be critical in our interactions with various stakeholders whether it is suppliers and partners, our customers, and above all, our employees. We will have to jointly work through these times. Towards this, the finance professional and teams have a very important role in every organization. I would like to once again thank SAP India for this opportunity to share my thoughts with you today. A good day. I would like to hand over now to Keval. Thank you.